All right, guys, Rich here from the RC Network, and I've gotten this question actually a lot lately, and it's basically how do you do the cutouts on your high flow bodies, or in this case, the new Evo body from Proline? Um, you know, there's, there's lots of different techniques out there to do it, um, and, you know, obviously everyone wants to have the cleanest cut, because if you don't have a, a clean cut, it could lead to... Uh, uh, basically the demise of your body very rapidly if you have any um, uh, corner cuts and things like that. So uh, typically people will use uh, pretty much like an X-Acto knife to um, you know, cut out or score the lines and then kind of rip them out and whatnot. Uh, in the past years I have used a uh, body reamer to go ahead and make my corners and then go ahead and score it with the X-Acto knife. But still you have some demise of the plastic over time running the body and then the corners start cracking and then you got these cracks just splitting everywhere. So this is basically my, not my newer technique and it's not anything I invented, but I pretty much use a Dremel. Uh, this is a Dremel I've had probably for about 10 years now. A little two-speed job and it does a pretty good job. It goes up to 30,000 RPMs and... As far as the bit that I'm using for this particular demonstration, uh, this is a bit I picked up at a local hardware store, and its model number is 7134, and it's actually a diamond point bit, and it's probably a little bit overkill, but the thing I was after was carving and engraving, and it's a very fine tip, uh, so you can get into some of the intricate details of our hobby. So. You can see there, it does a pretty good job. Now, when you're using a Dremel, the, the biggest thing you want to do is, is you know, you're, you're dealing with plastic or Lexan, and you want to have a high enough speed to get the bit moving, but you don't want to have too much speed to where you're going to start melting plastic. That's the other thing is you want to kind of cruise through this, and you don't want to stay in one place because once the heat starts building up, you will start melting plastic, So, and that's definitely not good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you kind of how I do it. Um, you know, there's a million techniques out there. I'm not saying this is the right way, but this happens to work for me. I've done one cutout right here already just to practice so I don't look like a fool in front of you guys. And you can see there it looks pretty damn good. So let's go ahead and show you guys how I do this. And um, typically the way I do my, my, my bodies is I'll cut out a few of the cutouts. I'll go to the track and then I'll start fine-tuning how many more cutouts I need. In other words, you know, once I get the appropriate amount of nose dive and, and, uh, and front wheels up on the jumps is what I'm looking for. So, and if you didn't know, uh, the, the biggest thing why we do these cutouts is to counteract the parachuting effect of short course bodies. You know, when these things are flying through the air, um, air gets caught under them and not only slows the vehicle down, but it could make you go nose high and all sorts of different weird things. So let's uh, let's go ahead and show you how I do it. Um, I use a body reamer. This is a one made by Dynamite. Picked this up a while back. It's been pretty good for me, so I, I definitely like it. it. Has a cover on it, which you know typically is the first thing to um, either go missing, but it, it stayed sharp over the years, and I like it. It also has a depth gauge here, which is pretty cool. Uh, what I like to do is I like to um, start my first hole. Um, with a body reamer just to get things started because I don't like to use the bit to plunge into the plastic. Uh, you can end up uh, you know, moving around and whatnot. So I go ahead and start off with just a little hole here right up in the top corner. You only need one. You don't have to do four or two or anything because pretty much you're going to let the bit do the rest of the work. There we go. Make sure it's all smooth. We're done with that. Now the next part of this is going to be pretty loud. So you know, mute or lower the volume if you'd like. I'm going to try and bear with my hearing. So I, I usually cruise this thing up to high just to get the speed going. So I'm cruising through it. And here we go.
Alrighty, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, a couple things you want to keep in mind. Uh, um, I usually take, you know, maybe a five or ten minute break in between cuts uh, just to let not only the bit here cool down, but just so you're not melting too much plastic. Uh, the other thing is, you know, you want to have a, a pretty good clip. You want to have uh, bearing on what you're cutting, so I usually hold on to everything. Um, you are cutting through things, so on a little safety note here, you are using power tools and you are cutting through things, so you don't want to have your fingers up underneath here because you could possibly cut yourself. Yeah, that's power tools, guys. Um, last thing here is I do is I go ahead and I take my X-Acto knife. I kind of trim up these edges right here, just kind of like a little chamfer right there. Inside, you got to be careful because uh, you did paint the inside of your shell, so you don't want to take off too much. But all in all, the, uh, the cut looks pretty good. And you can see there, there's just a little bit of burring there. And that will come off with the X-Acto knife. So all in all, a great little uh, cut. And I have a few more of these things to go before I go to the track and cut a few more out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a couple people ask for this and just want to help uh, uh, get some of this information out there. So that's it for now, guys. If you have any questions about this video, throw it on down below. And as always, thumbs up and subscribe. That's it for now, guys. Over and out.